pack. Welcome to the Sovereign Light. A driving moment <laughs> brought to you from Anchor FM Radio Broadcasting from six different platforms. And I'm your hostess, Reverend Maria Aravana TV. With us here today, our very special guest, Glittering Star, Roxy Carr. Roxy. Roxy, how are you? Good, how are you? How have you been? Oh, yeah, I haven't seen you, my friend, since I believe 2017, when we first met, I was, uh, I'm still going through these eating disorders, and I was looking for a dietitian, and it happened to be at the uh, vegan uh, center uh, that helps people with their, uh, you know, food and diet and things, and uh, I met you having soup there at the yep. community center of the vegan community center of downtown toronto yep. and yep. you were you were living downtown at the time and i believe uh, no i wasn't but i that was when i lost my mother and i was going undergoing through a lot of grief and you know eating and things like that and then i met you and you started talking to me about uh, veganism yep. and folks oh, welcome to today's show um after moving out of the Toronto downtown scene, as we just discussed back in 2017, uh, Roxy Carr, she uh, packed up and left for up north to uh, Timmins, Ontario. And um, from there, yes, she opened uh, uh, with her vegan online grocery uh, since November of 2019 and has very uh, her very own eatery for pickup or delivery. It's called the Northern Lights of Fox Majorie. No, nope. faux Majorie, like faux. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> faux Majorie, and you know, if I if I miss but say something about your last name or something, I don't say it correctly, like previous one. Oh my gosh, you know, and then oh, I said it like this. And so, yes, help me pronounce it correctly. It's faux Majorie. Northern Lights Faux Marjorie, so which just is like so we make a plant-based cheese, we make plant-based meats and foods, and then we have a grocery as well. So um, yeah, so we're up here in Timmins, Ontario, and uh, we're unique and pioneering and the first of our kind. So uh, yep, <laughs> I left Toronto and all the noise and drama and just just all of the busyness and I came up here and as you can see in the background that was where I was today oh look no uh, no chemtrails <laughs> yeah very few well we can still see them up here a little bit but not as much like you do in Toronto with the gray sky all the time right but, uh, it's uh, for the most part it's peaceful at night it's silent and you know the woods are five minutes away if i want to just go in pure silence and it's beautiful there's fresh lakes there's uh you know we went mushroom picking a few days ago and <laughs> this is this is this is where my soul shines so uh yeah so i opened up uh, a plant we say plant-based because uh, when you say vegan a lot of people get uh their back up about it uh, so when you say plant-based, because everyone eats plants, not everyone is vegan. Uh, so then that sort of joins us all together. Because in my business, I serve everyone. So I serve people who uh, eat animals, people who eat some animals, people who don't eat animals, people who have allergies, people who are unwell, uh, people who want to learn about nutrition and eating better and compassionate eating and kindness. So... Um, and we don't discriminate discriminate against uh, anyone at all. So um, yeah, so we're here to serve our community and humanity at large. Do you help? Do you help advise people like you know that community center? It had a nutritionist 
Do you also have that on board or do you advise yourself as a nutritionist? Um, so I, I speak to people about my own personal journey because that's all I can really do and, and the knowledge that I've learned and uh, many, many years of research and also trial and error myself. So for me now, I'm actually raw vegan. Wow. Uh, so I eat uh, 80% fruit and uh, 20% like uh, seeds and uh, greens and my own teas that I make with raw. So I don't typically eat cooked food. So I, I speak of my journey of going through all the different cycles of nourishing and how it's affected me and how I'm healed in my, my body and how I don't get sick anymore and how I have this, um, you know, beautiful, like, vibrance in, in my form now. So I, I will help anyone any way I can um, to guide them into a better way, but also through the, the, the business, I'm showing them like all the possibilities. So every week we make uh, specials and we, we come up with all kinds of different foods that are, you know, like the old way, but without all the poisons and the toxins and the, um, the deadness of the animal. So, uh, yeah, so I, I help people as much as I can in any way. Um, so, uh, but I don't have like a service right now just cause I, I honestly don't have a lot of time. <laughs> so, uh, cause we have the production, we have the eatery and we have the, um, the grocery as well. So it's a big, it's a big job. <laughs> so it's, it's three shops in one. It is right now, basically. Yeah. And we're about to move uh, to a new location. So I uh, can't really talk about that too much because uh, it's, it's in, it's in the process and we're having a big uh, opening and, and things like that. So I have a professional team that's working with my business now to take us to the next level so it's all very exciting so is this going to be an extension from this downtown Timmins what at 89 cedar south that you're located is it going to be an extension or well you know? no that location is going to close because it's uh it's we've outgrown it oh and, and, um, the new location will be able to do production of our cheese, our, our cashew cheese, and we have some new uh, products that are going to be released to the world, uh, which are really, um, really, really forward thinking and really incredible. Those I can't speak about too much until the release, but um, we, I like to push the, the limit of what can be done with plants. And uh, so we'll have uh, other cheeses coming out very shortly uh, besides our cashew cheese. So what I'm looking at here is your website. And, and, mm -hmm. and folks, you can have a look at, at her website. There is a link on here if you would like to see more information. Um, and I'm noticing here you have a Thanksgiving dinner menu. Mm -hmm. This is something new that you put on here. Handcrafted turkey roll with stuffing served with mashed local potatoes and classic yeah. gravy. Four cheese roasted garlic alfredo, spaghetti squash, and pumpkin pie. Like, is there like actual um, meat in this or? <laughs> no, it's made from, uh, from plants. So uh, the turkey rolls uh, are made from vital wheat gluten, or we can make them gluten free, depending what, uh, you know, but we make sure we use non GMO so that you don't have the, uh, cause GMO is what causes uh, the gluten sensitivity in people's bodies. So a lot of the, the wheat that's out there, the typical wheat is, uh, the, the shaft on it is, is shorter now, and it also, uh, it's DMO, so it, it causes a lot of problems for people. So we don't use any of that. Uh, so we, 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 we can take the, the gluten, uh, the vital gluten, and we can turn it into any type of meat. So it tastes, the taste, the texture, uh, the mouthfeel, it's all there, uh, but it's all made from plants. And then, uh, so we went to the local market, we bought... Uh, <laughs> pumpkins which we're going to cut up and uh, make the pie fresh and then we're, make, we're making everything from scratch so um uh, it's very important that uh you know you know where your food comes from you know who makes it 
uh, you know what's in it. It has ingredients you can pronounce. So any of our meats that we make, uh, like typically our uh, Mongolian beef is one ingredient plus the sauces. Uh, same thing with our, like our chick on, uh, it's one ingredient and then the sauces and the broths. Um, but the actual ingredient in the meat is one. So, uh, so we're making that for Thanksgiving. We have a, a Mennonites, um, they're called the uh, Bowman family. So we get potatoes from them. So they're locally grown, they're, uh, chemical free. They're grown the old way. So, um, yeah, so we like to do these things, uh, for holidays and, uh, because the meat, the plant-based meats, some of them that you buy in the store is just full of uh, processed stuff. And, you know, you want to eat as less processed food as possible so um, that you can have the rich health. <laughs> uh, so when you're saying processed, do you mean um, preservatives? And uh, yes. Okay, so what kind of uh, like monosodium? glutamate or what uh, what do we have to be careful of when we go to a store and we read the ingredients what should we stay away from well if you read the ingredients and you can't pronounce the names that's in the food typically uh you want to stay away from any of that you want to stay away from uh uh you know like any sort of anything that's chemical sounding any dyes like a lot of dyes are come from animals anyway so uh you know, there are some excellent meats out there, like fast food meats, like Beyond Meat, Impossible Burger, things like that. But if you le le read the ingredients, there's 20 different things in it. So the more ingredients that you have that you cannot pronounce, those are going to be things that are toxic to our body, that are not good for our body. So, for example, so when we make our chicken, we're using like a, a soy, a soy curl. So the soy curl is basically just dehydrated soy and it's it. And then we re-moisturize it and then we add in plants like uh, things that are good for you, like tamari, which is a high quality soy uh, sauce. And then we have things like uh, the maple chicken. So we have local maple syrup, we have fresh garlic, we have fresh onions, nothing to, to preserve it. So uh, you wanna look for foods that have a short, um, lifespan. For example, our cheese is 30 days, uh, our cashew cheese. Um, right. So it's 30 days and, and you want to eat it. You can freeze it for up to three months. Um, but, but other than that, you want to make sure that you get foods that you have to eat. Now there's foods such as dehydrated foods. They will last longer because the moisture is taken out of them, but the shorter the shelf life, the better it's going to be for you. So like fruits and vegetables and greens and all of those things, they, um, they're better for you than something say, well, it's going to expire in two years. So that's going to be, that's going to need a lot of chemicals or it's probably has no actual uh, food in it. It's just chemicals mixed together to make a food like substance. So you want to avoid anything that's a food like substance. You want to check out the ingredients. If you cannot pronounce it, stay away from it and you know uh, like we could go through a list of all the ingredients but i just i don't remember all the names um so for example uh, uh subway subway had buns and they had a chemical in it is the same chemical they use in yoga mats so that's not something i know <laughs> it's not something you'd want in your body uh you know so you've got to look at all these things that make these artificial food-like substances mm -hmm. and try and stay away, th away from them. Try to find whole foods, natural foods, foods that are free of pesticides. Uh, so a typical strawberry could be GMO and it could have 80 different chemicals on it. So you wanna stay away from that stuff. You wanna stay away from giant fruits and giant uh, looking things in the grocery store that are not organic because typically organic grows a little bit smaller um, although right. up here, people grow some very large organic vegetables because our season is small and it, it grows really fast. So, uh, yeah, you want to you, you want to stick with the whole foods as much as possible. That is so very informative. And, yes, you know, some people don't even know what GMO means. A genetically modified organism. Right. So 
it's the food has been altered in a lab so that uh, some of them, they will have Roundup uh, edited into the actual genes. Roundup is a toxin that is sprayed everywhere and has decimated forests, decimated soil, uh, decimated our bodies. Our, the, the thing you have to remember is you have a living, um, you have a living bacterial culture in your belly and in your brain. So when you're taking things that your body it doesn't recognize as food or as chemicals and things like that, and you're putting it into your gut, you're making your, your bacteria sick or you're killing it. So the more bacteria, the good bacteria you have in your belly, the better you'll feel. The lower the bacteria, the worse you're going to feel. And, if it, and then that bacteria feeds this bacteria up here. So if the one in the gut is bad, one in the head will be bad and then that's how we end up with a lot of uh mental health issues so for me i found that um i think you might remember i was suffering from post-traumatic stress pretty bad and uh i am pretty it's almost gone now so it's healed my gut is healed uh my ulcers are gone i had a bleeding ulcer i had another ulcer that almost killed me uh, I sleep well. I have great skin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, even look at my hair. It's like I have a younger. Few, <laughs> I have a few little grays, but or whites, but nothing compared to what I could have had. I don't dye my hair either. So I don't use any chemicals on my skin. If I can't eat it, it doesn't go on my body. Um, I am disciplined. I do not use alcohol. Uh, I don't drink pops. Uh, I do drink kombucha, which is another bacterial colony, uh, fermented tea, which has helped restore my gut health. Um, I get lots of fresh air, lots of sleep, lots of nature, and uh, lots of peace in my life. So, uh, but you, it takes practice. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you you got to start to research what's out there. You've got to start to research what's in your food because um, when people, there are people that are producing food that they're not in it for your health. They're in it for money. So, always. Uh, always. Well, yeah, but for me in my own business, right. if I'm not looking to poison people, I'm not looking to just make money, uh, put out a product that's crap uh, so I can make money. I'm, I actually genuinely care about those who eat our cheeses and our foods and our meats. And, you know, we want to make the best, the best we can for the people that we serve because a business must be there to solve a problem in your community or within humanity. Making junk food isn't solving any problems. It's adding to the problem. It's adding to disease. Uh, as someone said to me, you if you live a life of ease then you don't have disease right so, right yeah. and and you also you're a cat loving animal activist a uh, heart yeah. and vegan promoter as we speak you, you wealth of information i had no idea and i also wanted to ask you about yes. uh, you grow your own vegetables and you probably have your own little farm section you know the, the garden and how what is the what is the limitations there how much can you actually expand on it before you get the government uh, starting to come in and say well you know you need these monsanto uh, seeds and you can't grow your own so are there any kind of limitations there to how much land you can you can farm uh, well, I don't, I'm, I'm not farming uh, and and uh, as far as gardening goes and stuff, I don't have a lot of time to do that. Okay. Like I do, I do have a growing wall, but uh, we're actually, um, we're now working on a project that we're going to be growing um, tropical, uh, tropical fruits and, and such inside a grow, Arctic growing dome. So oh, wow. we just, we're just in a preliminary, preliminary sorry stages of uh creating what's called a an arctic arctic dome eco community so we will have domes where we can grow uh, we're going to bring tropical fruits you can grow them inside these domes up here in the north and we're going to show a new way uh of of living and also we want to be able to provide um to reduce the foot the carbon footprint in the world and to make it sustainable so uh we've checked it out and we can grow bananas, papayas, mangoes, whatever we want inside these domes. So um, 
best place that you see behind us is actually a land that we went to look at um, for this project. And uh, it's going to be like nothing else. <laughs> That's absolutely um, beautiful. And if I have to seeing, uh, you know, what's going on, I uh, might be forced to kind of leave here. And I would love to join you and your crew and help out as much as I can. And who knows, because well, these dome things, I've heard a lot yeah. about them. And it's uh, about time that we start settling in like this. And, yeah. and you know, um, also, I'm, I'm picturing Alan's gardens, the way they have that dome where people come yeah. in. Yeah, well, it's going to be tropical like that when you go inside. So the domes are um, a passive solar, so they collect the heat, and then you have to have water inside. It's part of the system, and then you have fans that spin around, and they they move the heat around. But it you can grow all year round. You can also the the roundness of the dome is also good for your your body, your DNA, because in nature there's nothing that's straight. There's no straight lines. And these houses that we live in with the straight lines and all the toxic stuff is not good for us. So we want to create um, a, a, a space where people, a sanctuary where people can come, people can uh, enjoy uh, peace and quiet and a new way of living. They can pick some uh, fresh tropical fruits in the north. And uh, we want to start uh, actually coming up with solutions because if we sit around and we wait for uh governments who are in my vision it's corrupt. for the people no we can't have them anymore the people yeah, yeah. no the, the governments are, have failed every uh, well we government itself means mind control so basically <laughs> well that's what it means so these they're they're not able to come up with solutions their solutions are always violent or fear-mongering or you know about themselves it's always about the money but it, as, as living beings and connected at the soul level, we have to start helping and caring for each other uh, because otherwise we're, we're going down a very dark, dark road. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. So, we have to unite and keep connected with each other. And I hope, to, I hope to, you know, be more inundated with this and keep in touch. And I'd like to have you on the show again and even okay. much more if I can help out and, and come and visit and maybe stay. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. And folks, Roxy believes in the impossible by accepting that all is possible. And with the strength of faith in ourselves, we can have a better chance to achieve everything and anything. And with that said, I really enjoyed this conversation. It's been an enlightenment, uh, to say the least. And you have so much more to offer. And, you oh, know, so fine. thank you. Absolutely. And the light that you share with us, I would like to learn more about all this information. And uh, stay tuned, folks. I'm hoping to have you on here again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank well, I'm very grateful, my friend. And I missed you. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, me too. Okay. So. Thanks, everybody. Yes. Back here.